I've been racing Hyperland for about four years now, which means enough time to make setups that have features like custom theme switchers right here, along with wallpaper switchers right here. So if I just show you the wallpaper switcher, that's what that looks like, along with overviews and more. And in that time, I've made setups that on one hand took me weeks to complete and on the other just took me a couple of hours. In this video, I will be showing you all the tools that I would personally use if I, let's say, reinstalled Arch and then needed a fully functioning setup as fast as possible. So this video is going to be one of two parts. In this part, I'll show you the essential non-negotiable apps that you need when making a setup, all the stuff that you see on most setups that's actually useful and necessary. And in the second part, I'll show you extra features that you can implement to take your Hyperland experience to the next level and make it that much better. That's the part where I'll cover theme switchers, wallpaper switchers, which is basically eye candy, along with clipboard history and more. So let's start. The first thing you're going to want to do is, of course, install Hyperland itself. You can either install the main Hyperland package or you can get the Git package, depending on how often you want to receive updates. However, if you're going to use Pac-Man to install it, you're only going to get one choice, which is going to be the one that's in the extra repo. Otherwise, if you use yay and just type yay-s Hyperland git, you should get the version of Hyperland that has way more updates. And if you're okay with things breaking every so often, because that happens when you're using the git version and with stuff basically, you know, breaking because of updates in the config file, in the config file syntax, just go with this one. Or if you want something more stable, just go with the one that's in the extra repo. Okay, then the second thing is going to be your terminal. Now, I am using Kitty right over here. The reason why I'm using Kitty is because of its just better font rendering. If you've used macOS or you've at least seen what text looks like on macOS, you'll know that the rendering has a sort of sharpness to it while still being soft. And that kind of GPU based rendering probably is exactly what Kitty is good at. So if I type something here, maybe I'll type something like echo. Okay, and I'll open the same thing. I'll type the exact same thing inside of here, okay, echo. Now, if you can see, the font looks a little bit frail on the right side, whereas it actually looks a bit full and like it has some sort of substance on the left. This is the foot terminal, and this is kitty. As you can see, there is actually a difference. If you're not did used to looking at fonts and then inspecting them up close like this, you might not be able to tell, but there is definitely a difference. So the main reason why I use kitty is because of the fonts, as well as a couple of other features that it has. Now, which one should you use? when compared to kitty or foot. If speed is the only thing that you value over everything else, then just make sure to go with foot because it has client server architecture, which basically means you have a daemon, a foot daemon that's running in the background and you have clients that connect to that daemon in order to basically display the window. And that sort of architecture, which means that it's just much faster than any other terminal that's out there. Like, take a look at this. And the only drawback that I've experienced with kitty so far is that it it's a little bit slow when you compare it to foot. So let me just rapidly open a couple of apps so that, or a couple of terminals so that you can get to know what I'm talking about. So this is with me pressing my mod key and enter three times in order to open three terminals, okay? I'll just do that once again for you so you can see what's going on. One, two, and three. Again, one, two, three, okay? Now let me do the same thing with foot and just note how faster, how much faster the terminals tend to open. There you go. Like, it might not look like much on screen, but definitely when you're actually hitting the keys on the keyboard, it is a very, very noticeable difference. So all that to say, if you want your terminal to look prettier, make sure to go with Kitty because it has much more features when it comes to fonts as well. You have ligatures, that's something that's missing inside of foot. And it also has other features like live reload, which is actually missing in foot. Now, if I change the theme to something like Grovebox, let's say, as you can see, the colors immediately update make this even more noticeable, I'll just run the fetch and change to something like Horizon. Okay, the colors change immediately, but for foot, that is not so much the case. Yeah, now it's going to change, but watch what happens when I change to something like Night Fox. Themes change here, but then it doesn't over here. This is still using Horizon colors. So if you're going to implement uh, functions like live theme reloading and whatnot, definitely go with Kitty. Otherwise, if you just prefer speed over everything else, make sure to go with foot. You definitely cannot go wrong with it. Now, as for the app launcher, that's going to be the third thing that we're going to be covering. The app launcher that I'm using right over here is Rafi. So this is going to be the main app launcher that allows me to launch .desktop apps that's in user share applications. This one is for the theme switcher. This one's for the wallpaper switcher. And this one is for the waybar layout switcher. 
This also works, by the way. So if I show you, this is the one that I usually have, but this is the one that I have upgraded to. The Komorebi Island Style, Dynamic Island Style Bot, which is what I have right here. And as for which app launcher you should actually use, consider your goals for a second here, okay? What kind of setup do you want to achieve? Do you want a consistent, statically themed setup, which basically means that you have only one theme, probably something like Capuchin or Grubbox, and you're going to base your entire setup around that particular theme? Or do you want to have theme switching functionality so that whenever you get bored of one theme, you can switch it out for another one? Because depending on your answer, you have one of two options, okay? You have way more options, obviously, but there's only one of two if you really want to get that good experience. The main one, the first one, if you plan on theming your setup a lot, is going to be Rafi. That's the one that I'm using over here, and it's actually very versatile in terms of theming. Now, you've probably seen this already, but if I switch to another theme, let's say Everforest, okay, the way that Rafi works is that you reference different files inside of the config that you're going to use in case of this theme switcher over here. So the colors actually update immediately. Now with something like Walker, on the other hand, that's another launcher that you might want to use. Okay, with Walker, theming is a bit more difficult because you have to mess around with XML files and not just that, but then the update of the theme doesn't happen immediately. So you're going to have to kill the daemon that's running in the background, which basically means that it's a hell of a lot of work. So if you plan on theming your setup a lot, just make sure to go with Rafi. You definitely cannot go wrong with it. You can make it look as pretty as this and hell, even prettier. But if you're okay with having perhaps a little more extra functionality, but, or rather, are okay with sacrificing variety in terms of themes, then Walker is the launcher for you. Okay, as you can see, it's a multi-purpose launcher with a lot of features. And this is what it looks like. Now, by default, this is the Kanagawa theme, and you can change the CSS in order to change the colors, okay? And it also has a bunch of other features over here. All of this, by the way, you can also have on Rafi, but here it's just implemented by default. So choose whichever one you want based on your goals. Now, the fourth thing is going to be your status bar. The status bar options that I'm going to mention in this video for you specifically are either going to be Waybar or Hyperpanel, okay? If you want just a simple status bar that tells you everything that you need to know, then Waybar is going to be plenty for you. As you can see, Waybar can actually be made to look pretty cool and sexy without having to use huge desktop shells like Quickshell or AGS or Ignis or Fabric or whichever other desktop shell is out there. As you can see, just with a simple JSON, dot, uh, JSON file along with a CSS file, you can make Waybar look as good as this. And not just that, but because of its versatility, okay, you can make stuff like layout switchers for Waybar as well. So this is what I have when it comes to Velvet Line. This is ultra minimal, so if I decide to turn off animations and then just go with a more minimal setup, perhaps something that I use when I'm trying to focus and eliminate distractions, this is what I would use. Then let's say for something like subtle, this is what that looks like. Ta-da! This is also a pretty minimal one. I can also shift the modules to the center so that I get more of that island style look. Otherwise, there's a couple of other ones like alchemy with a monospaced font, but Definitely, the best has to be these four. The other themes, I'm yet to make them look even prettier, but for now, come on, baby, this one, this one's the best. So, if you don't want to mess around with coding desktop shells, but then you still want the ability to be able to control different aspects of your bar just a little bit more granularly, then Waybar is going to be perfect for you. If, on the other hand, you want a GUI in order to customize your bar and you don't mind not getting access to the code itself, then you can go with something like Hyperpanel. So this is what Hyperpanel looks like. And as you can see, there's options for having dashboards and little pop-ups that open whenever you press the button, of course. And if you want something like this, then you're going to have to go with Hyperpanel. Or if you want something more minimal, then you can go with Waybar. Now, because there's actually a lot more functionality and stuff going on over here, this Hyperpanel is, of course, going to take up more resources. So depending on whether you want more or less resources to be used, you're going to have to pick accordingly. And if you want to learn how to make waybars like this one, along with custom theme switchers like this one right over here, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator. It's a program where basically I show you exactly how you can configure stuff like this yourself. So if you want to learn how to make setups like this one without copying anybody's dot files, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. Now, now as for the notification daemon, use Sway and see if you want notifications like I have right over here. 
Not just that, you also get access to a panel that looks something like this. So this is what the notification panel looks like. Now, if you don't want this sort of panel or you don't want this sort of notifications, you want something that's even more minimal, then you can go with something like Mako. Okay, here, Mako is actually meant to be a lightweight not Wayland notification daemon. So if I scroll here, this is what Mako looks like. Of course, there's a sort of configuration that it has, so you can actually change the colors and whatnot. But if you want notifications that are more like this, instead of having a lot more functionality, then you can go with Mako. Otherwise, if you want notifications that look as fancy and have as much functionality as this one, you're going to have to go with Sway and C. If you're going with Sway and C, which is, of course, the one that I can tell you most about, you can configure it in JSON-C, same as Waybar, along with a style.css file. So if I show you that to you really quickly, okay, right here, there's a config.json and a style.css. So if I open the config.json, it's all pretty simple stuff. Even if you have no idea how to code, just ignore these curly braces, okay? Ignore the curly braces, ignore all the syntax uh, stuff, all the um, little sweet syntax stuff that's over here, and just concentrate on what the words inside of this, on the inside of these quotes actually say. And when you think about that, that actually ends up making configuring Sway and C pretty simple. And as for CSS, you can watch a 15 to 20 minute tutorial of how to configure CSS, how to write CSS on YouTube, and that should be plenty in order to help you get started with writing Sway and C as well as Waybar. Now, as for the last thing, we're going to be talking about Polkit. Now, Polkit is basically policy kit, which means in practical terms, it's the password box that opens whenever you have to escalate privileges, okay? Now, let's say I wanted to execute a command pacman s something like, hmm, what package can we install? Let's get, okay, what is it? Whatever package, okay? Let's just type pacman syu So we're trying to update pacman syu So it fails because we cannot perform this operation unless we're root. Now, what this whole kit actually allows you to do is basically gives you a password box so that you can type in your password and escalate to root privileges whenever required. So let's do that right here. So if I type pk exec, pk exec pacman syu and I have a polkit daemon running in the background, what's going to happen is I'm going to see that password box right here. And if I do not authenticate, of course, it says request dismissed. If I do authenticate, I can type my password here. And it's going to fail because it's wrong. So I'll just type my password again, and now it executes the command as usual. This is best when you're actually writing shell scripts on your own, and not just that, but when other apps ask for privileges, if you do not have this Polka daemon running in the background, they might just fail silently and then not have to, you know, they basically are not going to work. So in order to set this up, you have two options. You can either use GNOME Polkit, which is what I'm using here. You're going to use that if you have a mainly GTK-based environment. Okay, so the apps that I use mostly are going to be something like Thunar, which is written in GTK3. Okay, Thunar, and that's basically all the apps that I use. Thunar, VS Codium is written in Electron, so it's not really bothered by GTK settings that much. Another app would be something like Pavel Control, and if you have all these GTK3 apps configured, instead of cute apps, something like Kden Live or Kclock or Dolphin, okay, if you've configured those apps more, then just go with GNOME Polkit. If you have configured cute apps, something like Dolphin, Okay, if, you, if Dolphin is your file manager and you use lots of apps like Caden Live, or you have basically apps like Qt5 or Qt6CT, if you use more cute apps, then you have to make sure to use Hyper Polkit Agent because that's going to be appropriately themed based on your cute theme. And that is pretty much it. That is all the essential stuff that you need in order to make Hyperland work and set it up as fast as possible. If you want to learn how to make custom theme switchers like this one, and Waybar theme switchers, Waybar layout switchers, like the one that you have here, along with wallpaper switchers and everything else that I showed you, overviews as well, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out Hyper Accelerator. It's a program that teaches you exactly how you do this step by step so that you're not lost just looking at one YouTube tutorial after another, not learning anything and just wasting your time. So if you don't want to do that, if you want to use your time as well as possible and get a proven step by step path, just like the one that's in the theme switchers module, which is over two hours long, you can go ahead, click the first link in the description and check out the program. If you liked the video, hit like. If you loved it and want to see more like this in your feed, hit subscribe and I will see you next time. Stay rising. Mwah.